Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in a previous video we compared the performance of anti-framework core and dapper to see how they compare nowadays because it's been a while since we were in the old EF6 days that things were really rough and I wanted to see if the claims of the EF core team and Microsoft were true. And spoiler alert, they largely were. Mutations like add, update and delete were almost as fast or as fast in some scenarios as the same operation using Dapper. And that was very surprising. Now, one of the things that was lacking was memory. EF Core was more memory hungry, but the speed results were very surprising. However, querying, reads and filtering was not as good. It was actually pretty bad. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use one of EF Core's more interesting features to completely change this to the point where EF Core is as fast as Dapper. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsis.com. All right, so let's quickly recap, and I will have a link to that previous video in the description down below and the top right corner of your screen right now if you want to watch that first. It's a great video really explaining the methodology as well of why I did things the way I did in the benchmarks. I won't be going too in-depth here. Uh, so check that first if you want the full picture. But where we were basically was that we used SQLite and we had this movie, very simple object to use in EF Core and Dapper. And the reason why it's kept simple is to give as much of a best case scenario to EF Core as possible. Of course, more complicated objects with joints and stuff will mean that EF Core will get slower, but I just want to see how good the basic scenario is. If you want to see a more complex scenario in the future, leave a comment down below. And then we used SQLite because I didn't want to basically benchmark how fast the engine can run in my machine. I want to test something that runs on the disk. I have a very fast disk. The disk will not be the bottleneck. And really what we're testing here is the conversions that happen within EF Core. So the query generation effectively and execution. So this will give it the best shot it can. Now in the benchmarks, I'm using a seeded random class to make sure that the same data is generated deterministically. I'm using a movie generator over here uh, and I'm sharing the connection as well to again give EF Core the best case scenario it can have. Uh, and then what I'm testing for here is the single or default call of EF Core, the first or default call of EF Core, and then the query operation of Dapper. Now, you might be wondering if you watched that previous video, Nick, where is find, EF Core find? You could actually do dot find and find something by its key. And you'd be right, if you were to be retrieving something by its primary key, uh, you really should be using find. However, I also want to show you what it would be like to check for any other property. Now, the reason why I have both single or default and first or default is because there's actually a difference between what is generated behind the scenes. Single or default, because of how single works in the context of C-sharp, will have a limit of two or a top of two in the query. However, first or default will add a limit or top of one. So even though conceptually single makes more sense, if you're getting something that has a unique value, you should be using first or default, not single or default. Now, of course, if the column is not indexed, if it is indexed, then it doesn't really matter. And then in Dapper, because I do control the query, it doesn't really matter. I just have single or default here because I know only one value will come back. Now, I have already run these benchmarks as they are now and as they were in that previous video. And where we stand is basically this. So single and first, effectively the same performance. So first, it's just a little bit faster because of that limit. But for the PK, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And then we have 6.8 kilobytes of memory as opposed to 2.2 in Dapper and quite a bit of a difference in performance. So we have 34 microseconds or 35 microseconds here and 7 microseconds in Dapper, which for many people that can be big depending on what performance means to you. Now, can we get this 34, 35 closer to the 7 of Dapper? The answer is yes, surprisingly close. And we're going to do that with something called compiled queries. Now, what is a compiled query? Well, when you say something like this to EF Core and you say, take this and give me the data back, EF Core will do a bunch of operations involving expressions and conversions of those expressions to a SQL query that eventually will be executed against the database. And that operation takes time and memory. So what we're going to try and do here is actually just compile the queries once. So compile this operation once on application startup and then keep them in memory and reuse them. So what does that look like? Well, I'm going to start with the single and I'm going to duplicate this method and I'm going to say compiled here and I'm going to put the compiled field, which we're going to be tracking just above it. So what I'm going to have is a private static, in this case, read only as well, field. And that is going to be 
a function, a delegate. So the way this will work is it is a func that accepts first the type of the context. So in this case, movie context, because that is what we are using to get to the database and get the DB set and use it. And then if you have any parameters, in this case, we have this ID we're passing down, then the type of this ID, and then the return type. Now, you have two options with EF core queries. You can have synchronous or asynchronous queries. Since this operation is async, I'm going to use an async operation as well. So the result will be a task returning a nullable movie in case the movie does not exist. And that's my fields type now. Now I'm going to call this single movie async and I'm going to create the compile query. So I'm going to say EF, the static class, and then compile async query. You can also have a compile query in here. I'm going to have a compile async query because again, this is an async operation. So let's split that because it can get complicated. So we have first the movies context over here, so context, and then we have the parameter, the GUID is the ID. And then I'm going to have my lambda and then use the context over here and say dot movies dot, and then I'm going to have my operation, but I'm not going to use single or default async, the same thing I'm using here, because for async queries, you actually want to use the synchronous version and it will be turned into async in the background. So I'm going to copy the same delegate here and I'm going to say, um, equals that ID. And that's it. Now I have that compiled query. And now I can just put a semicolon here, use that. And this whole thing now is return await single movie async. And we pass down the two parameters. So the movies context and the test movie dot ID. And that is it. So now I have this cached field, which is a function that has this compiled query that I can now use in this operation. Now I'm also going to do the same with first. The code is basically the same. The only reason I keep first here is so you can get a view of both how they scale and how they differ. So now I have both single and first using those compiled queries, and I'm going to go ahead and just run these benchmarks to see where we stand now with performance. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, and this is so cool, we went from 35 microseconds all the way down to 10 for both operations and the memory shrank from 6.8 to 2.75. That's a huge difference, which is so close to Dapper, almost the same. And I would argue that, yes, it is very impressive that the two now differ just by three microseconds, but also this memory difference will be something that you would also have to pay in garbage collection pauses, and now you don't have to. So for sim scenarios like this, EF Core just makes so much sense to use. It's very impressive that they managed to optimize it that much. Now, of course, in more complicated scenarios with joints and groupings and stuff like that, this can get bigger. And we're going to see that in a future video. Actually, if you want me to make that video, leave a comment down below. But I would say that for most people, the speed of development you're getting by using EF Core doesn't have to cost you now in runtime costs in terms of memory and speed. It's just super, super impressive stuff. And we're not going to stop there. I'm also going to add some filtering here because, okay, it's fine when you return a single movie, but what happens if you return seven movies in this case. Well, let's see. All right, so I removed all the other benchmarks here and I only have these two, which both of them are just filtering. So here I'm using a where clause and a to list async to match any movie with a year of release equal to 1993. And this I know will return seven movies for both benchmarks. Uh, and I have the same thing with Dapper. So we have these two benchmarks over here and I'm going to quickly run them to see how Dapper and EF Core compare in something that is just general querying, not a single item. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So EF Core filtering 32 microseconds, almost 33 and 7.8 kilobytes of memory dapper filtering 12.39 microseconds and 3.84 kilobytes of memory so twice the memory for the same operation and almost three times the speed so not fantastic however you can also compile a query on an operation that returns multiple things so how can we do that well it's a bit different it's not the same as returning a list of movies but i'm going to just duplicate uh, this method over here and i'm going to say ef filter compiled over here and then above it I'm going to cache that field so it's still a function that accepts a movie context or a movies context here but instead of returning a list of movies I'm going to return an I async enumerable of movies and actually I could also pass down the year of release as a parameter to make it more of an equal comparison so int here and then I'm going to just say get movies 
async, and I could say get movies by year async, whatever I wanted. And then the method of compiling is the same, ef.compile async query, we're still going to have the context and we're also going to have that int, which is the year. And then we're going to say context.movies where, and we're going to use dot year of release equals to year. And that is it. You don't say to list async or to list. You're not going to do anything like that because what we're going to do in that compiled method is actually create the construct we want to use to return it. So it doesn't restrict us to a list. You can choose to enumerate this in any way you want. What we will do is just create a list to contain the items and then use an async for each loop on that get movies async function we just created and then add the results in that list and then just return it. And that is it. So now I'm going to run my benchmarks again and see how the three now compare. So results are back and it's what we have here. So as you can see now, we are way better off with that compiled query from 32 to 14 microseconds, just two microseconds difference from that dapper query and very close in memory. So compiled queries clearly get you to almost the same performance as dapper, again, in those simplistic scenarios. So should you be using compiled queries everywhere? Well, that's something for you to answer because those fields need to be allocated and they do take some time to execute. Now, how long do they take? Let's add a benchmark for that as well. So I'm going to compare now how long it takes and how much memory it takes to compile that first movie async query with a simple ID check. And then I'm going to have just a little bit more of a complex query. It still doesn't have any joins, but it has a select, it has a where, and it has a first or default. So you'll be able to see how a more complex query makes this slower and less memory efficient, hopefully. So let's run this and see how the two compare finally. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So the first movie async compilation, 1.2 microseconds and 1.65 kilobytes of memory that it's going to live in your application basically forever. And then this complex compilation, just with that simple complex query, we went up to 2.4 microseconds and three kilobytes of memory. So depending on how many queries you have and how complex they are, they can have an impact on your startup time. So you have to keep that in mind. And of course, they also inflate the memory that you're going to have to maintain throughout the application because those fields will be treated as static fields or singleton fields that you're going to have to carry around and reuse. Ultimately, my advice is it's up to you. You have the data and now you also have the means to know how to get the data for your own systems. Again, I'm going to have a link in the description. If you want to become a Patreon to get the source code, I'm going to add all the benchmarks back to run those tests for your own purposes. But that's where this simple scenario stands. And that's how we can get EF Core to be almost as fast as dapper. But now I want to know from you, did you know about compiled queries and were you using them? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more content like this and hit the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.